Chio, everybody. I'm here with Dr. Bunio. Dr. Bunio, how you been? I've been I've been well. Thank you, Chris. Good. You guys have been busy at the hospital. I know your uh, contact tracing team has been super busy, and I wanted to say thank you to them, and I know you may have some words for them as well. Yeah, a big shout-out you know, to our uh, public health right. colleagues who are doing a lot of this work, trying to get this surge under control and keep this community safe. So I know some of them have been working you know, days on end without a day off, and, and I, I just want to— Thank them for all their work they're doing. And really, to any of the frontline workers out there, if you're if you're serving food at this point, if you're at the casino, if you're a casino employee, uh, any of our emergency personnel that are out there, uh, we really appreciate that. I know that a lot of uh, the tribal government at this point is working from home, teleworking, uh, to kind of scale back a little bit of the the person to person interference here. Yeah. Um, and so. With that being said, I know that lately we've been really trying to target groups that have maybe trying to get togethers at this point. And I know we have Thanksgiving coming online. Let's talk about a little bit on the uh, the groups and the gatherings. What do we what do we need to say to that? Yeah, uh, you're right. I mean, most of the the little clusters that we found are related to gatherings, and I, I think it's worth talking a little bit about what do we mean by that? Right. Because you know, what, what, is, what a is a gathering? Right. Well. A gathering is any time you're getting a group of people together that are not in your immediate circle or your, your immediate household. Okay. Um, this is where we know the virus can spread really easily and really fast. So even if you just have uh, uh, another family come over, so you have yep. two children maybe and they want to play together and you have another family, that's that's a gathering, correct? That is, you, yes, you're right. Um, you know, things like uh, uh, cookouts, right. um, birthday parties, uh, weddings, funerals. Um, you know, any any group of people that don't live together, and it's particularly dangerous when they're inside. Okay. Uh, there's no good air circulation inside, so the virus will spread quicker. It's worse if you it's it's worse if you are not social distancing. Okay. If you're inside and you don't have enough room to put six feet between you and the other person, that's particularly okay. bad. And if you don't wear a mask, and unfortunately we're seeing this yeah. in the community that. Um, People are tired, and they want to see their friends and, and families. I understand that, but that's why this virus is now surging, and, and it's, a, it's a little bit out of control right now. Right. Um, you know, you talked about other families coming to visit. Well, you can have a family come and visit another family, and if they stay outside and they, they don't have to social distance between their family, they live with those people. Right, right. So you could have one family over here, six feet away from another family over here, and you can, you know, you can have a visit. You can make a visit work. You can. Okay. But, um, you know, you, you've got to just follow the three W's. Right. You've got to wear your mask. You've got to wait, stay six feet apart, and you got to wash your hands. Right. So if somebody's prepping food or anything like that, just make sure you're wearing gloves. Make sure that you're leaving it somewhere <laughs> for people to, to get to. The, if, like I said, in the circles, they can do it themselves. Yeah. I, th I think that's that's one of the things that we've seen is, you know, at, at these uh, cookouts. Right. And this is really timely because, we're, you know, I think we should talk about Thanksgiving. Right. Is um, the – if you set up a, a kind of buffet so that people serve themselves, they're, everybody's touching the same serving utensil. Right. So that's a potential area of spread. Correct, correct. It's far better to either, you know, one person pre prepare the plates. They wash their hands or wear gloves or they wear a mask. Prepare plates for other people to pick up and go and okay. eat further away from other people or within their, their household circles. group, right? right? right. Um so, yeah, it is a risk when you set up buffet style and, and one person goes by and takes a scoop of potato salad and then the next person uses that same spoon. Right. Right. Which uh, wouldn't be me because potato salad completely grosses me out. So that's not going to be me anyway. I'll skip okay. past yeah, that. Good, good to know. And, and, and in the tradition of Thanksgiving, I'll make sure this year I shoot a turkey and leave it on your doorstep and ring your doorbell. If, if that's true, if before that's, you come out. Yeah, if that's traditional. <laughs> I, I'm not aware of that. I mean, being I, I'm going way back, you know, uh, Plymouth Wait. Rock, um, Pilgrims, you know, we, we're getting together. And so I'll okay. bring you a turkey this year and leave it on your porch. Oh, I appreciate that. Yeah, yeah, that'd be good. But uh, no, um, in all seriousness, um, Thanksgiving is coming up. What, you know, families are going to be getting together. If we can keep those circles small and we can keep those circles practicing the social distance that they uh, that we yeah. suggest, it can be mitigated as far as the, the security risk on that, right? Right. So there's the CDC's come out with some guidelines about what's sort of the safest and sort of, you know, moderate risk and high risk. Right. So um, the safest is you have Thanksgiving with your household. Gotcha. You know, you're, it's a 
it's an opportunity to get together with your your own family. You're you're together all the time. You have a nice meal. Yeah. You don't have to wear masks. You don't have to social distance because you're already near each other. Right. Um, second best is doing it virtually in some way. You know, you have your meal, have a call with, you know, another family yeah, or another Grandparents friend. or friends or family. Yeah. That and, sounds fun, by the way. I, I think I, that's what I'm going to try this year is the virtual yeah. Thanksgiving. That sounds pretty cool. And, um, you know, one other thing to remember, um, you know, what comes after Thanksgiving well, it's, what do they call it, Black Friday? That's right. Big, big shopping day. That's true. Do your shopping online. Okay, go for the Cyber Monday. Do not go to these large crowds or trying to get this, you know, discounted TV. Right, right. You know, you know we talk about the three W's, and I, I want to make sure that people understand that we ask you to wear a mask when you cannot keep your distance. Right. But if you ask me what's more important, Distance trumps mask wearing, which trumps hand washing. Okay. Right. So, if you can keep your distance, that's the best. Okay. Prevention. You wear the mask when you can't. You know. So if you're at Walmart, you can't. You can't control whether someone's going to come down that aisle and be within six feet of you. Right. I mean, I try. I turn around and swerve I, around. Yeah. Like a NASCAR you know. race in there. Yeah. Yeah. It's it's it's, <laughs> it's pretty dangerous. Um, so you wear the mask when you can't social distance, but social distancing is most important. Okay, and um, that's what the you know public health goes by. If if you are wearing a mask but you didn't social distance and that person ended up positive, you're still going to have to quarantine. Gotcha. These are good; they help prevent you from getting sick, but they're not 100 percent. Gotcha. Yeah. Have we been seeing some better results from some of our contact tracing lately? I know last time we talked, we'd urged the community that if you get a call or if you if you turn out that you're COVID positive, that you share that information so that we can contact yeah. trace people. I think that's super important. Uh, I think I think they are. We are doing a little bit better good, on that. Good. Um, we definitely. Uh, well, I can tell you, I, I mean, as we talked before we went on, we have over 300 people that are supposed right. to be in quarantine. So, you know, these are people that are identified as contacts. Um, so how can you avoid getting in quarantine? Don't put yourself in the situation right. where you might be a contact. Right. So we get back to Thanksgiving, right? Right. What we described, you're, you're, you're pretty safe. I mean, if a member of your household ends up with COVID, you you're stuck. Right. <laughs> you're right, right. you're going to have to stick, stay together for 14 days. But, um, you know, the second best option, you know, for Thanksgiving is hold it outdoors. Oh, yeah. Right. Yeah. There's a lot more airflow. Um, it's a lot safer. Now, I don't know what the weather's going to yeah, be like on 14 Thanksgiving. 14 degrees, but we we'll make it work. We'll get see. A tent. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, don't get a tent. Then you're, you're yeah, no, don't no get a tent. outdoor thing. So be outdoors. And maintain that social distancing, okay. right? You know, again, you can have one family over here, another family over here. Yeah. Um, you got to kind of think about which way the wind's blowing. Right. If, if you know, um, Uncle Bob is coughing a lot over here, and the wind's blowing towards you, and it could go more than right six feet. So, you just kind of got to use your best judgment. But so, staying within your household's best, doing it virtually is best. Second best is have it outdoors. Okay. Have only one person preparing the plates right, or, right. or you know, serving people. And, um, you know, that's that's probably the next best thing. Right. Um, you know, I was thinking about, you know, social distancing is really important. So this is an opportunity for, for you to, if you're going to watch a football game, you sit on that couch and you say, I get the whole couch. Right, right. Nobody else can sit next to me. Oh, so you can confiscate the whole couch. You get to that couch, you got it. New you know, rules you gotta, of couch you gotta, shotgun. You're going to lay down and say, well, it's COVID. I like it. Nobody can sit next Nobody to here. me. Nobody here. Be here. <laughs> um, so then worst is um, what we talked about. Crowded spaces um, where you can't social distance. Right. And if people are not wearing their masks. Um, particularly indoors. We are seeing a, humo uh, a humongous spike. That's where a lot of our numbers recently are coming from, are these kind of gatherings where folks are inside, multiple families are coming together, yeah. events. Uh, we're seeing this where, where people are tied together inside and they're not practicing the three Ws or they're not allowed to because of the spacing issues. And so that's where you're seeing a lot of the numbers. Is that right? Yeah, that's right. And, and of course, we understand, you know, uh, you know uh, things like, like a funeral. Oh, yeah. There are there are safer ways to do that to pay your respects. Right. Um, graveside service, outdoors, social distancing, wearing your mask. Again, it just 
all goes back to those three W's right. because we understand that, you know, um, that's, that's a difficult time for families. It is. And they really feel the need to support each other. Um, it's just, it's really tough right yep, now. With this, this virus is hurting people in a lot of different ways. Now, Dr. Bunya, I've seen a lot of folks lately that are testing positive and that are going through this. They're having actual symptoms. It seems it seems to me like they're having a lot of symptoms now that we're in the past. We were a lot of asymptomatic um, exposures, I guess. Is, is that true, too? Is there a trend? Is there some kind of – and that may be too uh, too high up for us, but yeah, is it mutating or is there, is there something we need to be aware of there? Is that just yeah. something – no, yeah. I, I'm, so we're seeing more people get the virus, and so we're seeing more people that have, you know, different symptoms and prolonged symptoms. Okay. There's a lot of people, particularly there's this young age group who uh, I'm, I think they feel like, you know, they're, they can get the, the infection and then they'll be okay. Right. Now, there's two problems with that line of reasoning. Right. First of all, it's not true that there's a lot of young people who end up with, you know, this sort of fogginess and fatigue and right. ongoing symptoms. And second is we are now seeing an increasing number of cases where people have caught the virus, recovered, and they catch it again. Wow. And it's not necessarily that the second infection is is easier. Okay. You know, you would, you would hope that you have a little bit of immunity. Right. Um, we think that, you know, people will have a little bit of immunity, but, um, you know, we catch colds every year. Right. You know. We, as as humans, we have never developed immunity to cor other coronaviruses. Okay. So this idea that we can get, you know, this herd, herd immunity. Has not been it's, necessarily proven. It's not or? really solid. I mean, you know, we can, we can develop herd immunity. And herd immunity means enough people are immune so that the few who are susceptible won't catch it. Gotcha. All right. But the only diseases that we've developed effective herd immunity for are the ones we have vaccines for. Right. Right. We have we never developed uh, any sort of herd immunity to measles or mumps until we had a vaccine. So uh, just I want people to be cautious. It, it, you know, the strategy of catching the disease in the hopes that that will give you more freedom and immunity. It's we just that's just not backed up by science. Right. And, and that's what I was saying. I, I think I see a lot more of the symptomatic piece of it now with folks with upset stomachs, uh, the fever and the fatigue and the chills, mm -hmm. uh, the taste and appetite kind of stuff going away, the smell, I guess. And so it does seem like it's more prevalent right now. And so that I don't I don't see how people would want to experience this. Um, and certainly if you've had it, why you would want to go through it again. Right. And so definitely got to protect ourselves with that. Yeah, you know, you think about it. If 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 somebody takes their chance and they go go to a gathering and they say, well, you know, I, uh, people have done that and they've gotten away with it. Right, right. You know, but you know, our test positivity rate's ten percent. So if there's more than ten people in there, chances yeah. are one of them has it, and maybe an asymptomatic spreader, or it's the couple of days before they show symptoms. Right. Which kind of brings us to another really important point for gatherings and Thanksgiving. If you're sick. Stay home. Okay. And I hate to say it, but if you think you have allergies, there's no way to distinguish allergies from COVID unless oh, wow. unless you get an allergy, you know, unless you get, right. you know, a COVID test. So if you have any kind of symptoms, you know, and, and nowadays we're seeing all kinds of things, you know, that loss of taste, loss of smell, you know, cough, you know, runny nose, fatigue. Uh, so... The the message is, if you're sick, don't go to right. a gathering. If you don't feel normal, 100% normal. That's right. Don't risk it for anybody else. Yep. Gotcha. Um, there's a, a study, a survey going out, right? Yes. That we need to speak to. Yeah, there's a, a survey out right now that we encourage everybody in the community to take. And it's, it's kind of going to, it's going to help us understand, um, you know, what, what, their, their attitudes toward right. the virus and in particular to the vaccine. Okay. <clears throat> we don't know when the vaccine is going to be available. Right. Uh, but when it's out, we want to know how many people are going to take it mm -hmm. right away. Good. Right. Uh, we're not, we're not going to, obviously we're not going to force anybody to take the vaccine. Right. Um, but as we're, we're planning <clears throat> to um, give as many people the vaccine as want it, we want to know how many are going to take it. Right. 
because uh, I know there's some people are, you know, they're they're really they're confident and they're saying, yeah, give it to me right away. There's others that go, well, it's been kind of rushed a little bit. Yeah. I know that. I mean, you know, my feeling is it's being rushed politically, but si- the science is still pretty solid. OK. Um, if the vaccine comes out, um, we believe it'll be safe. Having said that, I mean, we don't have the years and years and years of experience with this one that we do with the flu. With some of the other ones. Flu shot, for instance, which, by the way, been seeing a real good response in this community to flu shots. Do that. Get your flu shot. Oh, good. Here's the best reason to get your flu shot. Uh, You don't want to get the flu because if you get the flu, you might think you have COVID. And then we got to stick that swab up your nose. And, you know, it's. It's not terrible, but it's not <laughs> comfortable. So you want to avoid getting sick, and getting the flu shot is the best way to avoid getting the flu. Good. And then having to, you know, go through all that, is it COVID or isn't it? Right. And, and you know, I To your knowledge, have you seen flu coming into the area yet? I haven't seen any. Okay. No, it's still early. Good, the, okay. Yeah, this this spike we're getting in, in COVID came a little earlier than I thought right. it would. <laughs> so, again, I'm just appealing to the community. Go ahead and take uh, care of this flu part of it yeah. first, and then we can continue to focus on the on the uh, COVID effort. Yeah, public health is 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 working extremely hard, but uh, you know I got to say to the community, um, we cannot test and contact trace our way out of this. Right. Everybody has to do their part. They have to. People have to stop putting themselves into the position of catching this. Okay. For a little while. At least till we have the vaccine, and that, and then we'll reassess things. Right. right. Um, our, our sense is is that our elders are are doing that. Okay. You know, the biggest spike is in this, you know, younger age group. I see a lot in the twenty to to forty nine range there. Yep. A lot of spike when you look at it day after day, you can see the numbers increasing in that area, and then the kids, I guess, vicariously through their parents. Yeah, and it's real tough for a grandmother not to, you know, oh, hug a grandchild or. You know, um, you know, spend some time with, you know, someone that they love. So don't put them in that position. Right. You know, don't put yourself at risk where you could be spreading the virus, you know, to to an elder. Good. Well, Dr. Bunio, we really uh, appreciate you coming on. And we'll yeah. uh, we'll talk and update the public again as soon as we have some more information. Yeah, I'm happy to do it. Um, glad, um, if the community has any questions, you know, for sure, we're happy to address those and, and just everybody stay safe. Yep. We'll talk to you again very soon. Data Dog, you?